let's get this straight. I don't owe you shit, all right? I'm a regular guy based in Kyiv, Ukraine. I experience Russian shellings once a week. I hate Russia. I hate all the Russians who don't do shit about their government. And I feel really happy when Ukrainian armed forces are killing them on the battlefield. That's a natural reaction. Natural. I bet you felt the same way when two planes hit Twin Towers in New York 2001. And I wonder if you would buy a game from Al-Qaeda the next day after the terrorist attack. Because if you would, you're mental. Something is wrong with you. This is not natural. This is not okay. And now imagine that something like Twin Towers terrorist attack happens every single week in Ukraine. Every single week that happens here. Last week there was a missile strike in Dnipro where 45 people died, including children. Children died, women died, animals died, people were just eating their dinner or supper or whatever, and then Soviet missile, yes, Soviet missile X-22 killed them all. And that's just one day of one week. We experienced that through 11 months since the heated phase of this war started. So don't tell me about the tolerance, about uh, this is only Putin's war, uh, Russians are innocent. Listen, did Putin push the button that launched that missile in Dnipro? Did Putin raped children in Bucha? Are these Putin clones on the battlefield? 300,000 of them. Independent Russian polling organization Levada Center found that 74% of Russians support Russian forces' actions in the war in Ukraine in a November poll published on December 2nd. The poll found that 42% of respondents strongly support and 32% somewhat support Russian forces' actions in Ukraine. I'll leave you the link on that poll in the description to this video. We don't see protests, we don't see any anti-war meetings, we don't see riots, we don't see any type of struggle. Zero struggle from Russian people. And you will tell me, well, it's the police, government, army and all that kind of shit. Let me tell you something. We fought in 2014 against our Putin. Police snipers were shooting at us. 100 people died then. Now we call them Heaven's Hundred. And we won! Our evil president at the time, Yanukovych, fled to Russia. He is still being in Russia at this point. Using this instability in Ukraine, Putin starts his invasion. He annexes Crimea and also a small parts of Lugansk and Donetsk regions of Ukraine. Y'all know what happened next. If you don't, I can tell you that in some, I don't know, other video or whatever. So don't tell me that Russians aren't guilty. Every single one of them who is not against the war is silently supporting it. This is not a game. This is not a fucking movie. This is real. So when y'all started to threaten my life, um, telling me about the death of a missile that kind of flies into my window, phrases about me hanging myself and all that kind of bullshit, I started to ban you. This is also natural reaction, but that didn't help. So I have just closed the comment section and because I didn't found any reason to discuss anything. Anyways, here is the rule. If you're nice to me, if you're nice to people in the chat, in the comment section, we talk. If you have a reasonable argument about the topic, we talk. But if you say anything about me, about my persona, threatening me, cursing me or the people in the comments section, then I'm not tolerating that. You're getting banned. Now let's get to the actual video, to the actual topic. We're talking about the Atomic Heart more deeply than it was in the first video. That first video was the bait video. Let's name it that way. Again, I don't have any secret fucking documents from FBI or any other secret sources, secret tapes and all that kind of bullshit. I don't have that. I'm not here to prove you something. I don't owe you shit. I'm here to deliver a message from all the gaming community of Ukraine. That's all I do here, okay? So let's go next. 
What do we know about Munfish and its past? Just a few years ago, back in 2019, the studio was described as a totally Russian studio with a head office located in Moscow. In 2019, there was a big article with a report from the studio's Moscow office, where, according to the publication at the time, about 30 people had worked. Link to this article you'll find in the description below. So, just a few years back, it was completely Russian company without any Cyprus offices and all that kind of bullshit. Something happened and they moved to the Cyprus. And that something is war in Ukraine and sanctions. Monfish was established in 2017, long after the war in Ukraine started. Like I was saying before, the war started right after the Maidan in 2014. Development of Atomic Heart started after the beginning of the war. But before the heated stage of this war, which started on February 24th, 2022. Monfish never, never said anything against this war. Not once since 2014. Not long time ago, Ukraine and other countries started to push on Montfish for the answers. What do they think about this war? Because they are Russians, they must have an opinion about this war. And they are public company. More than that, they are selling their game in Ukraine. We have the right to ask them that. We have the right to know their thoughts about this war. After Ukraine, Poland and few other countries, but mostly Ukrainians, started to push on them on Twitter. They've posted this dodging thread. Guys, we have noticed the question surrounding where we at Montfish stand. We want to assure you that Montfish is a developer and studio with a global team focused on an innovative game and is undeniably a pro-peace organization against violence against people. We do not comment on politics or religion. Rest assured, we are a global team focused on getting Atomic Heart into the hands of gamers everywhere. We do not and will not condone contributors or spammers with offensive, hateful, discriminatory, violent or threatening language or content. Just like me and you guys. Look. Then people started to ask them. Um, which people are you talking about? Pro-peace organization against violence against people. Which people are you talking about? And they have started to ban people, asking these questions. They always dodge these kind of questions. Why? Because they're Russians. In LinkedIn you can find the profiles of the studio founders. All the links are in the description. Artyom Haleev, Robert Bahratuni, Oleg Khodorishanin. They're all from Russia and have Russian passports. Yes, they work in Cyprus, but listen further. Bagratuni is special here. Let's talk about him for a while. He's a former top manager of Mail.ru group. Recently, they've changed its name to VK. VK actively supports Russian army through their um, social network and other kinds of media. They're doing it by creating different pages on their social network. Through these pages they collect money, the donations and all that kind of stuff to support Russian army, buying drones and all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's thousands of these pages if not dozens of thousands. And it's not surprising because CEO of VK is Vladimir Kirienko, son of Sergei Kirienko. Sergei is the first deputy head of the administration of the president of Russia. He himself helped to start a war in Ukraine and then its heated phase with missiles and genocide of Ukrainian nation. Sergei Kirienko is always the chairman of Rosatom. Quote, Documents show that Russia's state nuclear power conglomerate has been working to supply the Russian arms industry with components, technology and raw materials for missile fuel and leading to calls for the company Rosatom to be put under the sanctions. Washington Post article says, of course I'll link it down below. There's a lot to read about the Rosatom and Sergei Kiryenko because that man is pure evil. At this point Sergei Kiryenko is under the United States sanctions, again I'll link the Verge article about the sanctions in the description of this video. Again, I'm not a Sherlock, I'm not from fucking FBI, but if you can count 2 plus 2, you'll understand that Bagratuni is connected to the Kirienko family. I can't prove it to you that they know each other, but I think that top manager knows his CEO. 
I don't have any proofs of that, but something tells me that it's true. Now let's talk about Atomic Heart and the Soviet Union with its rockets. Today, Ukrainian community started to boycott this game because before that we didn't even know that the game exists, actually. They've showed us some pre-rendered footage, no gameplay, nothing. It looked... Блин. I'm sorry my power turned off because of the fucking Russians again. So, let's continue on. But it turns out that game exists. So why Ukrainians are doing that? Why are we boycotting this game and the Soviet Union? In Ukraine, there is a law that bans Soviet symbols. Why? Because in the present and in the past of our country, there were multiple bloody periods associated with the regime. Here, for example, is the flag of Soviet Union, which is shown by Ukrainian fighters who killed the soldiers of the Russian Federation near the city of Balaklia in Kharkiv region. And after the fight, they found this flag in their belongings. Link to this post is in the description below. I also want to mention a tragedy and a big loss for all of the Stalker fans, for all the Ukrainian gaming community. One of the devs of original first Stalker game, Volodymyr, nicknamed Fresh Yezhov, was killed by the Russians in Bakhmut. Russians who were similar to those with the Soviet Union flag killed him. Rest in peace. We will never, never forget. During the time of the Soviet Union in Ukraine, there were the Holodomor, the Gulag, the forced resettlement of Tatars from Crimea to Siberia, the creation of the NKVD, and then it evolved into the KGB. These structures shot Ukrainian civilians, scientists, and writers. They did it in basements, torture chambers, in death camps. It's all history. Just as swastika is banned all over the world, so Soviet symbols are banned in Ukraine. But the cynicism of the developers is crazy, because their website has Ukrainian localization. Remove it. We didn't ask for it. We don't want it to be there. We don't want to associate ourselves with this game, with this website, with you. So at this point, you have to understand why Ukrainians hate communism and Soviet Union itself. And not only Ukrainians suffered from it, all the nations, including United States, were suffering from it. That's why there was a Communist Control Act of 1954 signed by Eisenhower. It criminalizes membership in the party or support of the party in any way. Even though this law is still in the books, there is a Communist Party in the United States today. It is incredibly small and it has no influence but it exists, which is a shame, in my opinion. Anyways, let's bring us back to the Atomic Heart. Why am I convinced that Atomic Heart is promoting Soviet Union and the communism? I'm convinced that they're promoting it, but not against it, because of the setting of the game. Atomic Heart is positioned as the Bioshock in the USSR. The game describes the events of the alternative history of the 50s, where the Soviet Union came out of the Second World War scientifically and technologically advanced, reaching the peak of development with cold nuclear fusion and intelligent robots. The protagonist of the game as a KGB major. Remember, KGB killed lots of civilians in Ukraine? Okay. Devs say that they are critical of the Soviet Union, but at the presentation of Atomic Heart, after the war was already in its hot phase, on November 22nd, 2022, they had a party. They hung banners with the words, join comrade, glory to Soviet engineers, etc, etc. You can see that on your screens right now. I mean, they're loving it. They're eating, drinking, but in the meantime, their missiles are killing innocent people in Ukraine. It is such a joy celebrating one of the ugliest regimes on our planet during the war in Ukraine. Oh look, here are your favorite sex robots. They also have merch with Soviet symbols and even gaming chairs, which is cringe as fuck. Strictly speaking, Russia destroyed Ukrainians even before the Soviet Union. Destroying our language, our books, our culture, our memory, everything. They've been doing that for centuries. So now Ukrainians want to explain to the Western audience why we want this game to be removed. You see, if only this game was about the bad Soviet Union, where some brave soldier, you know, destroys it or something like that, like it was in the Wolfenstein, that would be cool, I'd play it. 
and if the Monfish were publicly against the war. If they said something like, okay, we're making a game about the bad Soviet Union, we're against the war against Putin, I'd play it. That would be a position. That would be some kind of a struggle with the system. I would think that they're not like cowards, shady fucking company that hides from the answers on the questions that Ukrainians ask it. But we have the complete opposite. They've actually posted the new Atomic Heart promo with skill introduction, where a good communist kid kills a bad capitalist. And that capitalist looks like the British capitalist or United States capitalist. I don't know. The message is like communism is good, capitalism is pure evil. But what did they just say on Twitter? We do not comment on politics or religion. Yeah. So let's talk about the publishers. We've talked about the VK before, so you're kind of familiar with the Sergei Kirienka and all that kind of stuff. That was the first one, okay? But there's two more. The second one is the Asian publisher. And I don't know shit about them. Its name is Ford Divinity, which is a part of the GCL group. They're located in Singapore. All I know about the Singapore is that it's the country for offshores also or something like that. If you know any information about this company, write me in the comments, because maybe you know something that I don't know. And there's the third publisher, and it's interesting. The international publisher of this game is the French Focus Interactive. They once tried to rob Ukrainian studio Frogwares, the creators of the famous Sherlock Holmes franchise. I think you've played it, you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. They tried to steal Ukrainian IPs. A link to this article is also in the description below. And now they are publishing the Russian Soviet Union piece of shit game, all during Russian full-scale invasion of Ukraine. And also this company really loves to publish Russian games, when other publishers don't bother to do it anymore, because Russia is too toxic for your reputation these days. But not for Focus Interactive, of course. Focus is a very cunning and smart publisher. They've divided the publishing rights of the game between themselves and VK Play, we talked about before. So that they could say something like this. Look, we don't publish the game in Russia, only in the rest of the world. In Russia it's VK Play, not us. All right? This is a smart decision in order not to take responsibility and to look good in the eyes of the Western audience. Focus Interactive also operates freely in Russia and distributes games to Russian bloggers, including those who publicly support the war in Ukraine. You'll see that when Atomic Heart will be released. All of them are gonna play it, promote it, in between the sessions they will support Russian army, collect donations and all that kind of bullshit for drones, for I don't know, for what. So as this dumbass on Twitch. Yes! Ura! Зи, зи, зи! Это Z, это победа, это Ви! Своих, блядь, не бросаем! Nazi pigs don't deserve to be remembered! Twitch, are you fucking crazy? What the fuck is this? We've actually sent multiple reports on this fucking asshole and I don't know, did they respond or I don't know what happens. I have to check on that, but we've sent multiple reports on that that dude because it's just crazy. He's literally sitting over there playing Paradox game, killing Ukrainians on the map and saying that we're collecting money for the war in Ukraine. And that is live on Twitch. And his audience is like 30,000 viewers or something like that. So, I mean, how, how is this even possible? It's like pure terrorism on the Twitch. And the best of it all, look at how Focus Interactive covers the release date of Atomic Heart in this message. A special release date. Remember how I talked about the beginning of the war? The hot phase of it with missiles and children's deaths? Well, here it is. Atomic Heart release date is February 21st, 2023. Exactly one year after the Putin speech. Vladimir Putin on February 21st, 2022, announcing that the Russian government would recognize the Donetsk People's Republic and the Lugansk People's Republic as independent, which led to the new phase of this war. Three days passed after this speech, and on February 24th, 2022, Russian full-scale invasion started. Now let's talk about the people and companies that are investing into this game. We don't have much info about them, but we definitely have something to think about. One of the studio's investors is the former Russian company Gaijin. What did they do, you'll ask me? Oh, it's nothing. They've just paid the terrorist YouTube channel called Krupnokaliberny Piripoloch for advertising. I'm not kidding. Russian terrorists are actually using this channel to 
promote their own goods. Testing different guns, collecting donations, supporting the war, all that kind of bullshit. Gaijin itself was founded by Russians in Moscow, but then they kind of moved to Hungary and they're located there at the moment. Here's the evidence of Gaijin War Thunder game advertisement being posted on that channel, which actively cooperates with the Russian occupation forces in Donbass. They've removed the ad actually using some VFX montage things. You can actually see the red paint marks on the video, uh, the edited video itself, so if you watch closely you can see that. The link to this video is in the description below. The second Gaijin game called Cross Out, its advertisement video had been removed from this channel completely, but again, you can delete the internet. Internet remembers everything. Here are some screenshots from that video, you can check it out, link in the description below. The leader of this YouTube channel is a Russian terrorist called Smirnov Alexei. You can read about him in the Peacemaker website, I'll also leave the link in the description below. Another major investor of the Montfish is Gem Capital. Gem Capital is a Russian company that was founded by Anatoly Pali, who previously worked at Gazprom's subsidiary company called Gazenergasiet. Montfish received investments from them in 2021. Gazprom is the gas monopolist. They've blocked gas for Ukraine, blackmailed people for as long as I know myself, and Gazprom is the most active sponsor of this war against Ukraine, if not the biggest one. This is a well-known fact because the company is owned by Viktor Zubkov and Alexei Miller, the closest Putin's circle of uh, oligarchs. There's mafia, murders, gas money, I don't even want to talk about them. You know, this is a world-known fact. And Alexei Miller is kind of similar to Sergei Kirienko, because they're kind of on the same level in the Russian government. So, if you count 2 plus 2, the Gem Capital was founded by a person who was working under Zubkov and Miller in uh, Gazenergaset and Gazprom. Again, I'm just a guy from the internet. I don't have any proofs, I don't have any papers, but man, something tells me that Pali and these Gazprom dudes are connected to each other. At least they know each other. And I think that I know where those money for Montfish came from. There's a really good thread on Twitter about him, about Pali. I'll just show you the screenshots and you read about it yourself. You can pause the video and read that. It's really funny, actually. The whole history, the whole career of Anatoly Pali is there. I also have a much shorter version, more compact version of the same thing. I'm showing you this screenshot right here. You can pause the video, you can read about it. All the links as always are in the description below. So the lack of transparency from the developers, shady investors and a strong flair of Soviet nostalgia should be alarming for gamers. The popularity of Atomic Heart on the global market, along with the media support, turned the game into a dangerous tool of Russian propaganda. If Atomic Heart is being developed with the money that originated from sanctioned Russian businesses and banks, Profits from the game could be directed to help the Russian government in its invasion of Ukraine. That's why you should at least think twice before buying this game. I don't owe you shit, you don't owe me shit, it's your conscience, alright? I can't control your wallet. All I can see is dirty company with this shady offshore Cyprus business model. We don't know where these money came from, but we can guess. Looking at the circumstantial evidence, we can actually guess. And eventually, those money that you're spending on this game, some of it will 100% end up in Russia and will support the war against Ukraine. And if you ask Monfish on Twitter about it, you'll get banned. They're using the good old Soviet Union methods even on Twitter. Stay safe, Slava Ukraini, peace.